Welcome to the Secrets Women Keep podcast. I am your secret keeper and confidant, Lauren White. I'm a qualified counsellor and sexologist, madam of a secret society, author of Permission, and a witty, highly intuitive lounge room dancing introvert. I help you as an exceptional woman in entrepreneurship to see, love, and trust all the parts of yourself, especially the unseen. Let's pull back the curtain, light the candelabra, and remove the mask. These are the secrets women keep. Hello, and welcome to the Secrets Women Keep podcast. I'm your host and confidant, Lauren White, and today we have a completely sublime guest. Her name is Laura Hassan. Laura is the host of the Shift Seekers podcast, founder of the Shift Method Experience and a travel and transformation obsessive. She helps leaders of the future see their unique path to change so that they can finally have the impact they want in the world. Laura, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much for that gorgeous introduction and for having me here. I've been so excited to come. Just hope my Wi-Fi is equally as excited as I am. So, <laughs> oh yeah, it's totally, it's totally in our favor. It loves us. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> it's gonna hold because it wants your message to get out there in the world, and it wants your message to reach the listeners of the Secrets Women Keep. I know that they need this episode so badly. Um, Mm. Before we get into it and I ask you the first question I ask us, I just wanted to fill in a little bit of background as how we know each other. I do this. I've done this with every guest because it just so happens I know every guest (laughs) so far. (laughs) Might be planned that way. Uh, But essentially I came across, I actually, actually, I first came across you, I think it was in one of Susie's podcasts last year where you're talking about, so I haven't known you for very long or known of you. Um, and it was your podcast and you were, and in that episode on Susie's podcast, Susie Ashworth, you were talking about your wedding and how you, um, and being stuck in New Zealand and um, oh, you yeah. have to go back and listen to this episode or you might speak about this story. It's such a, such a cracking story. Um, <laughs> so cool. Uh, all about the power of, um, of manifestation and, yeah, <laughs> and really believing that you can get yourself out of a tricky situation that feels impossible. And I just loved it and I could feel... I'm not going to say feel your energy because that's a very misused term, but I could just feel how anchored you were in yourself on that, mm-hmm. on as a guest speaker on that podcast and being intuitive and reading people. I was like, oh, I like her. And I told my copywriter, I'm like, there's this woman called Laura Hassan podcast. Yeah, Laura, she's in the lucky bitch, you know, money boot camp <laughs> as well. She's made this like, and we're just kind of, and it's just so funny. Like this web is so small, right? And over the last um, couple of months, I've started following you and just seeing more of your work and just am so grateful that uh, that you do what you do and that you've been where you've been to get to this point of releasing all of your messages because I just know that when people use the word transformation, I know Laura transforms lives. Like I, I know it deep in my bones. I know your work does. Like I know it's not about the testimonials you release, as amazing as they are. I just, I know I've got goosebumps running down my shins, which is a really good sign. Um, I just, yeah, I just know and I'm, I know I'm going to access more of it as time goes on. But in the meantime, I've been lucky to access it through Susie Ashworth's work in the freedom experience. So I just wanted to <sighs> high five you from afar. <laughs> like, you know, sing your oh princess. my gosh. I have to say, I have to say, you will not believe, well, you will believe, but like maybe your listeners <laughs> won't believe. <laughs> The I have just come off a call with my copywriter, like literally just before this. And we were talking about, because we're building a new website for the shift method, which is my framework. Mm-hmm. And the literal words that I have written down in this Google Doc are, uh, where is it? We want way more than a dopamine hit or a fancy testimonial. It's not about us. It's about them. And then you just said, oh my <laughs> gosh, like, not about the testimonials. I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. It's not about the testimonials. 
<laughs> I, it's it's really not. Um, one of my first guests on the podcast, Angela Gallo, who's a futurist and a visionary, she she believes that um, maybe maybe money won't go away, but she really believes that social currency will be like mm. the highest form of currency. And there's a big part of me that believes in that, that it'll be about um, how you've shown up in the world and what kind of connections you've made. And we're not talking about elitist connections. It's about giving and serving. And I feel, to tie it back to what you just said, I feel like I feel that through your work without needing the testimonials to vouch for Mm. what you do. So I really think the way that you show up and the message that you have is just works of its own accord. And so Mm. it's so gorgeous to watch. And I think that that is the, that is the future. It will not be the flashy stuff. People will. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you so much for that reflection because I feel that. Mm -hmm. And I will go so far to say that I have always felt that, which is why very often I have neglected to even remember to ask clients that I've had for testimonials or and, and we're using testimonials and it's as, as an example, but you know, for me, it's not about how can I prove this to people? Mm-hmm. I really trust and people, you know, the conversation about the niche, it's like, I've always said my niche is people who are attracted to my energy. And that is, that is that. it. Well, more. I'm going to very gently extract and borrow that one. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> oh, um, Laura, whenever I have a guest on the park, podcast the first question I ask is about the bathroom store moments in life so I define the bathroom store moment as the moment where you are usually crying usually breaking down you're you're on your own and you're in a state you're in an unconsolable state of some sort and it's almost like you simultaneously want to be seen and held by someone but then you want to be invisible instead just from what I've shared about a bathroom store moment, and you can have them anywhere. Um, you could have them in your office. You could have them in the, on the plane. You could have them anywhere. Um, are you able to share with listeners a bathroom store moment that you've had? Oh, my goodness. Yes. How do I pick? <laughs> <laughs> and I love that you said or on a plane because that is yeah. very me. I am all about the travel. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a really specific moment that I've started, I've almost named it. Like it's a like it's a story that I tell that almost now I hardly even remember as being my actual life. You know how you have those moments mm-hmm. where you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so far removed from that now that I can't even drum into those emotions. However, when I start speaking it, I really can feel it again. So this moment was... It was about 10 years ago and I was a newly single mum to my about 18 month old daughter and I had I was a teacher and so I had left my teaching job to pursue my online business very unexpectedly and then in the same time period probably about 6 weeks later I also exited my marriage my first marriage um uh, also very unexpectedly And I didn't necessarily know why I was doing it. I just knew it was the right thing to do. And I remember being, oh my gosh, this morning, I feel it now. Here we go. I'm not even into the story yet. My body's gone all warm. The fear that I felt this one morning was so intense because I I had no money left. I was in this tiny little rented Mm -hmm. house that I was renting off my friend's dad And they were being really flexible with payments and all the rest of it. And I was in such sheer panic every night, every morning of how I was going to pay the bills because air quotes, the business that I was running was, you know, I was full-time mum to a daughter with no childcare and I didn't know where money was coming from ever. And I remember one morning literally realizing that I was on the last coin and that is what I call it, the last coin story when I, when I talk about it with my, with my team. I remember just looking in my purse and no, I knew I couldn't pull any money out of the bank and there was one coin left in my purse. And it was a Thursday morning and every Thursday morning I took my daughter, Ellen, down to a play group that was literally at the bottom of the hill where I lived. And so I knew that this particular morning I was sat there 
and it sounds funny when I say it now, but making the choice of whether to take her, whether to use that coin to take her to play group that we've done every week or whether to go and buy milk. Because I knew if I bought milk, she could have cereal for dinner. You know, she doesn't care. Mm. She's little. Mm. <laughs> I was like, as long as we've got milk, we're going to be okay. And I remember walking down the hill and thinking I was going to buy milk. And on the way down the hill, something shifted in me and I just carried on walking and we went to play group. And as I was, it was a very short distance, but between walking from the store, my palms have gone clammy, even as I'm talking about this now. I remember pushing her push chair down the, down the hill and just thinking, oh my gosh, you are in self-destruct right now. And it was hard to breathe. I was freaking mm-hmm. out. I was like desperate to just get into play groups so I could almost just see people I knew and distract myself from what was going on. I walked into that play group. I passed over that coin to enter the play group. And as I entered that room, in my like peripheral vision, somebody was just flying across the room towards me. And it was this woman who I did not know. And my business at the time was loaning out baby carriers, baby slings. And the scheme was like a charity donation to borrow it. And if you wanted to buy one, I made like an affiliate payment, I guess. Mm -hmm. And she she was like, oh my gosh, you don't know me, but my friend borrowed this sling and I've borrowed it off her and my baby is just so happy. And it's the first time I've had my hands back. She said, I've gone to the ATM and taken out cash because I'm hoping I can just buy this one from you. There was, um, honest to goodness, there was like 120 pounds in her hand that had I gone and trusted the like milk being the logical, obvious thing to do, that would not have happened because she didn't know how to find me. She just knew I came to that play group. So she came specifically to that play group to find me, to pay me for this thing, hoping I would, hoping she was asking me to receive the money. But that moment was like, oh my God. I mean, honestly, that whole morning and the night before, I just remember feeling literally sick to my stomach, like cried, all Mm. the things, the the clammy palms are back as I tell that story. That was a real, like, I am never able to tell anybody that this is my final coin. And what am I going to do? And yeah, that was my, that was my moment. Wow. What else shifted from that moment? So much. Now, my, absolute top value above all else is trust. Mm. And that was the walking, literally walking embodiment of trust. Like that was like my intuition moved me. Like Mm. I thought I was going to the store Yep. and my body, my physical body carried me past the store, down the hill. My mind is going, what the actual heck are you doing? Yeah. And it was trust. And it was after I came away from there that I, then I was able to tell the story and say to people, you won't believe, you know how we tell those stories. You will never believe it. (laughs) They always start like that. And (laughs) rightfully so though, I mean, rightfully so that story needs to start that way. Yeah. I mean, there was just no way you could ever write that out. Mm. And from that moment, I mean, I'd already made some massive trust leaps, right? Handing in my notice was another big act of intuition because I had not planned to do that when I did. Leaving my marriage, which again on paper was, per, you know, holidays, cars, we weren't fighting, nobody cheated, nothing terrible happened in my life. It was just nudges of like, move. Hmm. You know, th- those kind of like whispers of like, just make this change, move. And I was kind of trusting and starting to get to the point of like, oh my gosh, like, you are about to hit the bottom and then what is going to happen? And after that moment, the trust was dialed all the way up. It's like, okay, I know without any shadow of a doubt when I feel something, when my body is physically being moved beyond what makes sense that I can trust myself. Mm. And have you ever had any wavering doubt step in since then? Of course. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> on the regular. <laughs> and it's a it's a bit of a journey really when they do. I mean, mm. they always come, but I always find my way back to trust. Okay. Always. Mm. And so that I, I still go through the whole thing of like, oh, should I, shouldn't I? And I drag people into the drama of like pretending I'm making a choice. Yeah. And then inevitably it's I like, like that you put it that way. I like <laughs> that you put it that way. Pretending to make a choice. You already know. Yeah. I'm under the illusion that I'm actually like weighing things up. 
And then inevitably <laughs> I go with the thing that feels right and everything works out. I mean, it doesn't always work out in the moment. And I don't want to paint the picture that this mm. is like, great, I just follow what feels good and I don't care about the consequences and everything's always rosy because it's not. I mean, we've, I have so many stories of things where I followed what felt good and it's not worked out great, but there's always been so many lessons in those moments that in the longer picture, mm. there was always a, oh, that's why. Yeah. We've got to be looking at the longer picture when it comes to trust. It's not a, you know, for many of my clients or I'm on connection calls with clients, potential one-to-one clients, and it's like, okay, somehow the topic turns to trust and it's like, so, you know, blah, 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 do you trust? It's like, I think, I think, and it's like, okay, let's... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah let's just bring it back into the body yeah. what you know where's the body at what are you feeling and just it is a longer um yeah my experience of it is it's a long 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 life it is game it of, is and it's not linear no you know and, and we can always tell whenever I always say this to my clients and my people in my programs that um whenever there's a red flag for me anytime I can always tell red flags putting it strongly but like uh, i i know when somebody is not in trust as soon as they put the words i just need to figure out or i think i think or any of that yeah, is like yeah, yeah. that is where or i just i'm trying to trying to all, trust yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of those are like okay i i hear where you are yeah. and trust is around you if you yeah. want to find it yeah oh i like that i like that that's a <laughs> you know that's it's around you when it's not quite, it's always inside of you, but for you to actually access it and believe it yeah. is another. Um, yes. And live, stand by it is another thing altogether. Yeah, I like that. Um, I wanted to know something about Ooh. the subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing what you know about the subconscious mind and what people hold in their subconscious, can you tell us what happens if you know, when we hold a secret in there that we don't reveal? Mm, Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So much. So, wow. How long do we have? (laughs) (laughs) And that's the rest of the podcast. (laughs) Uh, I think this is the beginning of a six week program. uh... (laughs) It starts now. Um, Yeah. Just a few yeah, yeah, just a, a few tidbits maybe because I do want to ask you other things as yes. well. Okay, so most importantly, I think in answer to this question, your subconscious is highly moral. It wants to be in truth. It wants to be expressed. It wants to keep you safe. But it will not go against what is moral in your coding. Now, this does not mean that everybody's internal moral code is all adhering to what the socially acceptable moral code is. It's your own moral code. So whatever you were taught, absorbed, experienced growing up, that is your moral code. And so if you are holding something, whether it's that you are not telling the truth or whether it's that you are not fully expressing something that really needs to come out, you will not be able to rest and you might be able to sleep, but the sleep that you get is not fully restorative. And so your body holds so much stress when we're not expressed. Now we see this so much now in the online space, people talking about full expression and all of these (laughs) things. And it's like, actually there's a deeper reason why that's important. And there's a deep reason why we hold and why we keep things back is because this is where the two pieces come into conflict because your subconscious also wants to keep you safe. And if it has this even remote whisper of thought or consideration that something that you do or say or share might have you outcast by your community or shunned in some way or rejected it is not going to allow you to take the action that you, even if you want to say it, you're going to feel frozen. Mm -hmm. And all of that takes a stress on the body. And like I say, there's so many layers here because then your subconscious wants to keep you in this prime condition. Like it's responsible for all your automatic functions, like our breathing and our keeping our stress levels low and all of those pieces. And so when we're holding 
we're not in that like flowy prime state. And so tension starts to build in the body. And we all know that when we have those kind of pieces at play, that we're not fully rested, we're not at our best, and things start to stack on top of each other to build a much bigger picture, which can ultimately present in physical ailments in the body, illness, all kinds of other mood it's symptoms and issues and sabotage in your external mm. situations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So holding on is not for our highest good in a number of ways. Okay. I can see you shaking mm-hmm. your head. No. <laughs> no. Yep. So, okay. So I'm going to, for how much time we have, I'm going to try and uh, press fast forward and put some pieces together, but please correct me. How important, that says to me that revealing is really important, that revealing and releasing through your body, through your voice, through your story, uh, maybe there are other ways of expressions, is really, really integral to you being integrated because you can't be integrated if you're not rest, if your body and your nervous system can't rest. Exactly. And this is about regulation. Mm. Right. So your system, when you are holding, even the word holding implies energy, right? To hold Mm. something, it takes energy Mm. to hold something. Even if you're holding a feather, right? It takes energy to hold that feather because the merest whisper of air and it's like flying out of your hands. It takes energy. It takes concentration to do that. So when we're holding, we're not in flow at any point. And when we've been holding something for a long time, that is really like we, we don't even know how to let go because our body is used to holding it. Yeah. But that piece around expression and the the nervous system is so important because we can't fully ever regulate when we are holding. Oh, what are the consequences of that? So many things. This is where we see this in the, the, what it looks like outwardly is drama in some form. Mm. It could be burnout. It could Mm. be relationship sabotage. It could be money worries. It could be a letter from your landlord giving you eviction when you didn't. Like it just shows up in ways that you could never forecast. And unless you knew all of this that we're talking about now, you would never connect it all together. Mm. Yeah. And it also, I'm guessing it also holds up like that holding, it keeps people in a freeze response as well. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. So big takeaway from that one, because there's more that we need to discuss is revealing, expressing, um, any words that are regulating, regulating will come from revealing, expressing, sharing, storytelling, what humans have always done. Exactly. And Mm. I think it's important to add on to that, that when we talk about revealing, that that the word and the energy behind revealing can feel scary. Yes. And yes. so it's about finding safety in finding the way that you can express and release. It doesn't have to be standing on a global platform no. telling your secrets to the world, <laughs> just finding a way to release it from your system. Okay. Last question about that is journaling. Does the subconscious interpret journaling and speaking differently because they're using different parts of our brain? It's a, the journaling is like an opener because okay. what's going to happen is when invariably, when we, people who journal invariably access a level of truth that their unconscious keeps them protected from in their day-to-day life. So when this is why I'm a super fan of getting into autumn, I don't necessarily call it journaling, but it is the same thing. Just like being in that automatic writing state where words are just flowing through your hand and you almost can't keep up with what's coming through. We've all experienced that at some stage. Mm. And that's what I call what I call that. And when we do that, sometimes words come onto paper that can really like be shocking to us to read. And so that can be the first step towards that release, the reveal, the share, the acknowledgement. It's the awareness is the Mm. first piece. Mm. Incredible. Incredible. All the more reason to just write um, without an agenda, without um, a motive, just, and I really mean just in the healthiest expression of just, 
just right. Just yes. write a word and see what comes from it without censoring yourself. Absolutely. One of the facts that you shared recently on your social media was the subcon- that the subconscious mind makes everything personal. And I just hooked on to this, like it was one of five things that you were sharing. <laughs> and I just like hooked on to that last one and started like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> started like chewing on it and like going into like this spiral of like oh my god I have so many questions about this but I really only have one question about it um so I'll keep going the subconscious mind makes everything personal you went on to say when you say something positive about someone it turns it into a truth about you and the inverse of that is true Yes. So watch your negatives as well. (laughs) What I really loved about this as someone who sees women is it highlighted to me how important it is to see each other and to reflect things back to each other. And it's good for the person giving and the person receiving. That's what I, that's what I took from that. There could be, there will definitely be nuances, I'm sure. (laughs) Are there any exceptions (laughs) or nuances to that one that we should know about? Like does the subconscious mind when know when you're lying and like giving a false compliment? It's like, oh, I think that might mm. do this. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the thoughts are as powerful as the words. Mm-hmm. So w- if you're saying one thing and thinking another, going back to that highly moral piece, it no, it will just filter things through. So uh. if you are like saying one thing but doing another, that is exactly the same as holding because you're not, speaking or expressing any in truth so that is the exception to that so it's not about um i speak usually in very forward forward focused terms because as well our subconscious loves that so usually i'm i'm it's very rare that i give examples where i say it's not this because that's not forward focused but Mm -hmm. it's not about um just only speaking in positive because i believe really strongly that it's not about good vibes only right? It's not about like, everything has to be positive and da, 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 da. it's about finding ways. And this is why I love, I'm a big super fan of the nonviolent communication model mm-hmm. because it really teaches us to be able to communicate how we feel and what we want to say and why that matters without it feeling threatening to the person that we're engaging. And I really believe that if we were teaching this to our children, or I am teaching this to my children, um, if we were all teaching this to our children, that would really help in those situations. Okay. Are you able to, where can listeners find, if we just look, if we look up, sorry, the Mm. nonviolent model of communication will be, will we be able to find you Absolutely. Resources for that. Yeah. If you just Google it, nonviolent communication model, you will find PDFs that outline it, really clear examples. It's a well documented model. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not my work. And so um, it's something I've adopted and I bring into all of my containers and my community and into my home as well. Yeah. Okay. And the key difference between that and positive think like positive thinking and positive affirmations and just saying nice in quotation marks things yeah. to people is that the that model is is it more comes across as more realistic and it has space for being assertive. That's what I'm that's what yeah, I'm so guessing. As, as an example, you would you're basically recognizing your own values and what is true for you. And then you're able to share, I hear you. And when I hear that, I feel this. And I feel because I value or because such and such is important to me, would it be possible that we could blah, 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 whatever it is. So you get to make a request or you get to add something into the conversation or the exchange that allows you to completely acknowledge the person who's in front of you, but also express what you need in order to be a part, an active part of and a productive part of that conversation brilliant and that would make your subconscious happy because you're honoring your morals exactly ah okay (laughs) and this is where our values are so important and getting clear on our values right because that you know values has become a trendy thing now and it's like oh let's talk about values values driven this and values driven that and that's great but it's not just about values for value's sake it's about identifying your core values without judgment. It's not that some values are good and, you know, I must have the best values. It's just whatever your values are and being 
in alignment with those values so that you are somebody who is in integrity. Because mm-hmm. I often hear, it's a little bit of a tangent from that, but it is relevant because I, I often hear people identify integrity as one of their values. And my belief around that is that integrity to me is the canopy from which your values hang. Mm. And so if I am in alignment with my values, then I am in integrity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't even need to hold it as one of your five or three, four, five, six values. It will naturally occur when you, when you, align yourself with your values. That's it. Like to me, integrity is an identity. Mm. You know, somebody who is in integrity is living their life in alignment with what is true for them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's something that we all need to put um, on repeat. And I actually spoke about um, values in an episode about confidence and included values in that because how can we be in our confidence how can we be in our fullest expression if we're not connected to our values and I'm really grateful that you've given it even what like a lot more depth than the way that I put it by sharing that piece so it's all connected (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) makes me excited um okay um every time I go through a shift in my own growth I feel people pull away Yes. Um, big time. You said to us on a group call in the Freedom Experience recently that this is completely normal, that mm-hmm. people subconscious don't feel as safe. This is the way that you put that you put it, or the way that I interpret it, I should say, is that people subconscious don't feel as safe as they did with you before, and that it's really more about them than it is about you. Um, I suspect that this is a big deterrent for growth for a lot of people. I not just suspect, but I know it's like what who who will not who will fall away from my life when I grow, who's going who will leave me, who will reject me, who will abandon me. So lots of those core um core wounds and even some of those old traumas get triggered as well. Just mm. just wonder if you could expand on that one a little bit more in the context of the subconscious. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of the biggest ones that I spend the most time really supporting people through when they come through my program. And it is so normal. And so I'm glad that we're able to talk about it because invariably, as we know, our subconscious wants to keep us safe. Now, one of the other things that your subconscious automatically program for is to seek more. And it wants more of what it knows. Because if you imagine that it's running on programming, I mean, for anybody who is listening who is like Mac versus PC, that old battle, if you try to plug Microsoft program into your Apple computer, it doesn't compute and Mm. it will just be rejected. And this is the same of how our subconscious works. And so if we have a relationship with someone, and I have a very real experience of this that I can speak to, if we have a relationship with someone, we're like, okay, you know, when you get to know someone, you're, it all feels a little bit like you're tiptoeing around each other and then you get to know each other and then you start to feel familiar and safe because you know what to expect. When somebody starts making changes, even if they haven't communicated to them to you, your subconscious picks up on that change yeah. and starts to feel unsettled because it doesn't know what's going to happen. And it's like going back to, oh, and this is why you hear people say things like, I don't even know who you are anymore. Mm. And they might not have actually said anything or gone, oh, well, I want this now or, or expressed anything. It's just a, a feeling that is being emitted by your energy because once you acknowledge that, like, oh, there's shift and change emerging and it can be very subtle, what we tend to do is respond to that energy from others and then back to what we were talking about before, we start to hold. We start to hold ourselves to the old version of us because we don't want to be rejected by Mm -hmm. the people in our lives. And so my own first experience of this was when I, when I really started doing this work for myself, when I I was so scared of a full, of a real transformation, because I was absolutely convinced that if I allowed myself to really tap into what I desired, I wouldn't want to be a mum or a wife anymore. And I'd want Mm -hmm. to go and run away and live in the jungle in the middle of nowhere 
and just give up my whole life. And that was terrifying. Yeah. And I was not willing to explore that. And so I was buffering at my kind of ceiling for a really long time until I had to anchor in safety and talk to my family about those fears and about that, those feelings to gauge their response. And it was a slow process, right? People talk about rapid, instant, overnight transformation, this kind of explosive thing. And while, yes, that's possible, ultimately, that's not what we want as humans because it doesn't feel safe to us. So when we can go gradually and we learn how to communicate with those around us as we expand and really have those conversations that might feel really stretchy, we anchor in that safety to go, okay, everything's going to be okay if I explore this. And if I do see that that's what I want, we can talk about it. And from there, inevitably, our worst fears are never what really can't transpire. And for my example, I didn't want to go. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm right here in my office. I didn't want to go and run off and live in the jungle, but I did want to travel more. And I did want to travel solo. And that was not something that I felt was okay to ask for. And yet now that is my normal. Yes. So it was, but it was only through the exploration of it that we were able to f- discover that. So it's completely normal that people want to pull away from you. They get irritated by you when you just walk into a room or even the other way around because there's that unspoken energetic thing that's going on where it's just fear of like, in short, subconscious going, we don't know this programming and it may equal certain death. So we yes. can't we can't go here. Yeah. Yeah. I've felt, yeah. I've been very, yeah, I've, yeah, I've interpreted it as death many times, <laughs> many times of going, is this growth worth it? I'm mm. on my own. Like, yes, these people aren't around me anymore. And they were my cheerleaders. You know, we were resp- so not just, not just all about me, but we were respective cheerleaders. And now I don't know. And it gets awkward. I'm like, do I still cheerlead for them? Do I, do yeah. they want space for me? It's been like this big line of questioning of going, Oh, Lauren, you're a grown ass woman, like just like, but it's also I know it's just the unspoken, the energetic, the we just need to re we're in a process of recalibration and it just feels really awkward and Yes, it does. It's like your skin shrinks. That's yes. how I always, it feels like your skin has just shrunk and you're like <gasps> <laughs> Yeah. And I and I just um, I don't know if this helps listeners, but something I come back to is as much as I value belonging, um, intimacy is one of my core values. I've pulled out my old um, a little post-it note of values that's in my wallet. It's been in my wallet for ten years, and intimacy is one of my values. But as much as I value intimacy and connection with other people, something that I come back to when it comes to growth is don't self-reject. Like don't like this. Your growth is about your morals. I'm yeah. I'm a assuming it it's about growing by your morals and like the example that you just gave it wasn't part of your brain could have interpreted as I'm gonna run away but really it was about well there's a value that's not being um, accessed it's not being expressed it's not being um, given lots of love and attention and so there's a healthy way of going about it but yeah, what I come back to is don't don't self-reject. Like don't self-reject your own values and your own values around personal growth, because that's another one of my values, um, for this strictly for the sake of belonging, as long as you're physically um, yeah, as long as you're in a physically safe yeah. situation to do so. I know it's tempting. I don't maybe if there's anything else you can add to this, I don't know if this is the sagest wisdom, but it's something that I come back to because otherwise I'm gonna feel really uncomfortable holding myself back for the comfort of other people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think that's, I, I think all of that is absolutely true and completely valid. And we, we tend to do this thing where, you know, and I was doing it in that example, I will decide what's acceptable and not acceptable without actually talking to the people that I'm, I'm deciding on their behalf, what they're going to think and how they're going to feel about that. Mm. And we can't ever do that. Right. We can put ourselves in their shoes and imagine, you know, and have compassion for if this might be, it might be painful for them. How can I best communicate this? And this again comes back to me to the nonviolent communication model. How can I communicate what I need and what I'm aware that I need without saying, I'm doing this now? Right. Opening it up as a conversation without just being aggressive about it and say, Well, I've seen this and so this is where I'm going. 
It's like, mm. actually, we're in, we're in relationship, right? And I'm not, you know, my example, I'm talking about my husband, but this could be any relationship, even yeah. a client. Yeah. And it's about being able to have that conversation of, okay, I've become aware of this. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I would love to share and what happens when I feel this. And due to this, I would love to request or could, would it be possible for us to consider how we might, whatever it is that you are feeling drawn to or exploring? Mm, yeah, that's beautiful. That's, um, that's a very, yeah, that, that fleshes it out. <laughs> that yeah. fleshes it out really beautifully and puts it into a very practical way that we can start to express ourselves when this awkwardness comes up because those communication skills are so we just need to know some words I I find we just need to know a couple of words just to get us started so that we can start expressing and what you said are they're mature they're clear it's not an essay no and it's it's slowing it down again you know Mm -hmm. it's back to that thing because what there's there's a very again that whole thing about quick rapid oh my gosh we got to do all the things you can have the awareness and just be with that awareness, right? We don't have to like have the awareness and then, oh my gosh, I've got to like burn my whole life down and run away and do all the things. It's like actually the awareness is just the first part and actually the longer we can build in to just slow things down and allow you and all the people that you connect and relate to to get on board with like, oh, okay, this is happening. Everybody then feels safe and you find that not only do you have this unconscious permission that you didn't know you were kind of looking for from people or approval to go and do the thing you wanted to do or be the version of you you want to be but you actually have their support and their love into the deal Mm. love that so you just you graduate you fold it all in you fold it all together rather than yeah the rapid we'll have to have another episode about the rapid (laughs) the rapid um processes that are dominating some Mm -hmm. at the moment (laughs) I would love that (laughs) and that's all I'll say about that okay um (laughs) now we've called this episode the secrets of your to your sub of your subconscious because what else Mm. could we call it really (laughs) um (laughs) we just had to call it that uh I would love to know what's your current edge with your own subconscious and what you need to learn about yourself Oh my goodness. I am in it right now with acknowledging. Uh, so Okay. So my um my program that I run is called the Shift Sessions and it's a 6 week experience. And usually when I facilitate that, I am not doing my own shift work at the same time. This time it has been happening without my like a consent, if you like. It's been happening alongside, underneath, and this is how it goes, right? When you're ready for a shift or a transformation, it's time and you don't get to actually control that. And so I've been deep in my own personal transformation alongside, we're in week five now of our six weeks. And as we get there, I'm like, wow, I'm really coming out of this. Like I've been facilitated in my own experience. And for me, it's been about deep understanding of my relationship with my body and about acceptance of the difference between how I feel about my body and what I see when I look in the mirror and how I've been abusing that for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And as a mother of a preteen girl, Mm -hmm. really really feeling the, wow, if I'm not going to do it for me, like let's do it for the generations to come because this is not okay. Yeah. What kind of feelings is that process bringing up for you? So many. And it's, you'd think I would know, right? With knowing everything I know about how this works, that I'd be like prepared for what comes up. And it has been deep. It has been really helping me clarify the lines between coaching and therapy, which I love talking about when I'm Mm. talking with my facilitators in training and recognizing that when you are somebody who goes, I'm going to coach, I'm going to have a coach. I'm going to get somebody to coach me through this, that sometimes it needs something more than that. And sometimes it's about, okay, why am I holding myself from all of the support that I get to have to release this, to really explore it, to really name it and and look at all of the situations where this has held me back. 
because that's what I think has been most surprising to me is how deep this ran. You know how we always say, like, I get a lot of people that come in that are like, I don't want to focus on the personal stuff. I want to change in my business. It's like, I hear you. Mm -hmm. And we are whole human beings. And the change that you need is the change that's going to happen. And it's going to impact across all levels. And I've really, really been doing a great job of keeping this separate for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And so now what's coming up for me is just almost the fear, again, exactly what we were just talking about of like, Oh, what might happen and how fast might things change and go if I really, really integrate this part of me? Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. Have mm. you been have you been sharing this with your students that are currently in the sh- you have been? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. You've and been it's been like about it. Very transparent and also aware of like where it's helpful to share what I'm going through and where I'm just like, and I need somebody to listen to me. So I'm going to just come in here and talk to you. You would never do that, Laura. (laughs) Never just speak to someone. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Okay. So there's a, so there's a line. Yeah. There's a line there where you're sharing from a place of helping helping your students that it could be something that comes up for them as well absolutely and I really do I've always said and these are words that have just flowed through me always and I never really understood what they meant until the last two years but I always just knew I was here to be the example that's what I've always said I didn't know what it meant and it's this me continuing to walk the path and Mm -hmm. continuing to say to people you know like people will come for a round of the shift sessions and be like, great. Okay, good. I'm ready. I'm done. You know, I'm, I've arrived. I've had my transformation. It's like, yeah, that's yes. And, yes, and. <laughs> that was the first layer, you know, like we've got yeah. people now who've been through all four, they're coming to the end of their fourth round of the shift sessions and they are absolutely amazed at what has come up for them because they continue to do the work. And so for me, usually my work is to go in and do my own transformation before I facilitate the shift sessions. And I will say this is the first round that I haven't had to be quite so hands-on. So maybe that's why it's come out the way it's come because I haven't been so, um, you know, conscious mind occupied in the process. Mm -hmm. And it's been really gorgeous to be able to see that like unfold in its perfect way. But this being the example is really about really owning the fact that there is no destination. You know, it's like we can talk about the vision and the and the big vision that everybody wants us to talk about, but it's not a destination because once we get there or we move towards it or whatever happens and fate intertwines and leads us to something even better than we could even see, that there's a goal beyond the goal and there's a vision beyond the vision and there's a feeling beyond the feeling and there's life beyond this life. You know, it just keeps on going. And that's what, for me, once I really understood that, makes it so exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's, um, it is exciting because, and something that I was reading between the lines when you were speaking about what your current edge is, is the, the message I got was that this is old. This is, this is old, what you're up against, what you're not up against, what you're moving through and focusing on and acknowledging at the moment. Um, how old do you, what does your intuition say about how old this is for you? Um, it, in my conscious awareness at the moment, definitely goes back to the time of my birth. Mm -hmm. And when I go further back than that, like it goes back before my, this life. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. What I love about your work is that from what, from the simple exercises I've been able to experience with you is the answers come through very quickly and they do. yeah yeah very very, very clearly very, very specifically yeah and what's amazing about that is when they do is that we don't have to then sit and analyze it and no. like judge it no. and it's just like oh okay there it is yep and now I'll just go and make a cup of tea and yeah. get on with my day. <laughs> Or in my case, go to bed. <laughs> it's so lush. It's just like, yes, I'm going to let this all let this all integrate. I just feel so honoured to have accessed your work. And like I said, I can't wait to access more. Um, Laura, we've talked a lot today about what we conceal, 
what are three, and we have talked about being in your fullest expression, what are three things that you want women struggling with being their fullest selves to know? Mm, gosh. It doesn't okay. have to be about so just in general. Yeah. I That takes me back to that time that I was speaking about at the beginning mm. where of how I felt then, how scared. I was in survival mode. You know, that was where I was. And I really, I really would love them to know just that it's going to be okay, Mm -hmm. right? It is going to be okay because we are survivors and we are, I mean, the fact that you're listening to this conversation and this podcast and subscribed here shows that you are somebody who is willing to trust yourself and willing to go there and willing to do the work that Mm. probably many other people are not open to or even necessarily aware of. And so- yeah, I just want to say it's going to be okay, right? Keep yeah. doing what you're doing. It's going to be okay. And then secondly, I, I think it just really speaks into the speed of things, right? I, I, I speak to a lot of people who are really frustrated. They understand it all. They know how it works, but they feel like, what am I doing wrong? Because it hasn't happened already. And it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. And it's not our job to control the timeline and to squeeze the life out of things. We just have to be in that gorgeous trust, the terrifying gorgeous trust, <laughs> mm. and know that the timeline is not our concern. And that just because it hasn't materialized yet doesn't mean anything about you or how you're doing things. Yeah. And then thirdly, I think just the importance of really recognizing that when we see those memes and the sexy graphics on the Instawebs that say things like, you are the only thing holding yourself back that there's a much deeper explanation as to, yes, that's true. And here's why. And that's where all this subconscious stuff comes in. When I really, really, truly believe that when we understand and we learn how to, I don't like the word master, but just harness the amazing balance or harmony between our conscious and our subconscious, we really, really can create anything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) Wow. And you are the, you really are the example of, of that. And yeah. So yes, you are the example. There's just no more to add. It's like, why am I trying to add something to something with (laughs) full stop? (laughs) You are the example. And (laughs) you can just leave it there. Um, Laura, if you've got a couple of minutes, I'd love to do some quick shoot questions for you with you bring it Uh, it's really just first first thing you're good you're very good I love this game this is my favorite (laughs) first thing that comes through um what is your favorite sensation oh feeling that like surrender that comes when you realize oh it's happening whatever it is that feeling of just like oh here we go Oh, it's like I I got the visual of like taking off on a plane, like yeah. <laughs> just oh, to speak yes. to the travel thing of like the, oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite secret place? Oh, gosh. Every time anybody says, close your eyes and imagine yourself in a happy, safe place or whatever, anything like that, I am immediately transported back. No surprises here for anybody who knows me. <laughs> To actually, it's not the Maldives, which is probably what people who do know me are expecting. <laughs> I was holding, is, I was holding, waiting. <laughs> but it is, it is a white sandy beach in Thailand, and it's this tiny little cove beach. And I just remember having a moment standing on that beach where I had a very complicated childhood, and I remember standing on that beach. It was twenty two thousand seven. I remember standing on that beach. And for the first time ever, you know, where you have those situations where you're like, I know exactly where I am in the world. Yeah. Like, yeah. I had it once when I was at the pyramids as well. And I remember just going, what well, I could zoom out on the whole globe and know exactly where I was. I had one of those moments on this beach and I just walked away from the people I was with, sat down on the beach and cried, but not because I was sad, just because I was like, wow, I, me am here in this dreamy travel brochure looking place. The sand was so soft. And I just remember acknowledging at that point, none of this makes any sense. On paper, I shouldn't be here right now. And it was just the most incredible thing. So every time I picture a place like that, I'm back on that beach. Even though I love the Maldives, it's that beach. (laughs) 
<laughs> Sorry, Maldives. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to choose. You can love both <laughs> equally, but that's really, that sounds like a really significant moment in your life. It was, a, yeah. A moment of acknowledgement. Absolutely. Yeah. What's one secret talent you possess? Mm, I was a swimmer. I don't know if this is a talent, but I was a swimmer, like a competitive swimmer. And I, I was really good at swimming. And I was in the uh, team GB ready to be training for the Olympics. And um, I was diagnosed with having ME or chronic fatigue syndrome as a teenager. And the whole thing, the bottom fell out of all of it. And after that, I was just like, it doesn't, again, it's been so many times in my life where I've gone, it doesn't make any sense because swimming was something I never had to try out. It was just so natural to me. And I didn't go there. I didn't follow that path. But I don't have regrets about that. But yeah, I would say, I don't know if it's a talent, but it mm. was, I think it is because it was, Good. it was natural. Yeah. Yeah. Do you swim now? Hardly ever, which is so interesting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What's your secret pleasure? Mm. Alone time. It's mm. not really that secret, but alone time. Mm. And I think <laughs> given that like it has, it has been, a, I would say it has been a little secret of late because here in the UK we've been in another lockdown and you know there's this mixed feeling of like well I've got all this time with my family and you know there are people who haven't got this and I should feel this Mm. and all the rest of it but I love solo time I love actually I love solo travel that's my absolute passion it's not just solo alone time it's solo time going to different new places yeah and a little birdie tells me that you might have something booked for this year where you change. <laughs> I might have a little sneaky trip to the Maldives solo <laughs> planned for June. <laughs> uh, what's one? Oh, sorry. Who's one woman who's really seen you? Oh, Susie Ashworth. Yeah. I mean, on repeat. You know, like there's a, there's a reason. I don't even know how Susie and I came to find each other, but we definitely were supposed to. Mm. And Susie is one of the people, historically, I have had difficult, tentative relationships with women and, and girls when I was younger, like just, it's been a thing for me in my, in my life. And Susie has really our relationship that we talked about this actually recently on my podcast um really helped me to stretch and test and get edgy with how that feels to have those really uncomfortable situations where it's like this happened and I know you didn't mean for this to happen but this is how I felt when this happened and so it's been a really amazing exploration of what it gets to look like to have a full supportive loving challenging just unexpected relationship with someone. So yeah, yeah, it's been incredible. Mm. (laughs) Feeling like my heart and my chest is just going, oh, it's so good. (laughs) That's so good. I wish that for every woman. I would like just what you said. I, if I had magic stardust, I would just sprinkle it so that every woman has that experience and that ongoing love and being seen by another woman and yeah, yeah. stretchy all the good things that you said all the things <laughs> all the things um last one laura one-on-one conversation or mingling through a bustling soiree oh i mm, one-on-one okay <laughs> i was back and forth there on that whole introvert extrovert scale i'm one of those that sits right on the middle yeah and so i can really but i go deep with people fast Okay. Right. Like I can meet someone and by the end of one evening, we're like, oh my gosh, like best life buddies forever. Um, so yeah, I'd go one on one. Yeah. Okay. Gorgeous. Laura, it's been a delight. I've had a lot of fun. I think I've been smiling for 50 plus nine plus minutes straight. <laughs> 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 oh, it's been an absolute delight. I've learned so much. There's so much to to marinate with in what you've said tonight. And I would love listeners to know where they can find you. And if you can just share the names of your programs again, that would be fabulous. Absolutely. So 
we've actually just started a brand new Instagram account all for all of this amazing transformation chat. And really because I was, I was getting in the way of my team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was being a wild card on the yeah. daily. And so I was like, look, let's just put all this over here. So we have a, I have two Instagram accounts. My personal Instagram is at totally Laura. Mm-hmm. And the new one, which is all shift method content is we are the shift method. So we are building big old community vibes. And if you like some of the things we were saying here, all of the content where we educate and share about the magic of the subconscious will go there. Yes. And then the names of the programs, I have a, the six week program for your own transformation is called the shift sessions. And then I have a facilitator's training, which is called the shift method, where we go really deep. And it's really about learning how to facilitate that process inside the shift sessions. But it's all about doing it safely. You know, I'm really big on trauma informed teaching and learning. And again, that slowness, right? I really think slow is sexy. And I'm really here for Let's go on a 12 month experience. Let's not rush you out in a weekend. Yeah. And let's get really oh. embodied, integrated, really fully expressed facilitators yeah. out into the world. Brilliant. And do the people that are interested in your training, do they have do they need to have gone through the shift sessions before they apply? To become so the shift sessions, yeah, that's a good question. And that's been so interesting because we've been round the houses on this. We're like, because oh, mm. people come all the time and like, can I just do the shift method? And it is so important to me that people have been through the shift sessions themselves yeah. because it's the integration and mm. it's that thing of like, you know, you have to know it in order to do it. Um, however, what we are currently in the process of creating is a journey where people come in to do the shift method and they get to go through the shift sessions as part of that. So for people who are just like, actually, I'm only interested in my own transformation, the shift sessions is the path. And for people who are already like, I want the whole thing, um, then the shift method experience is what's going to be for them. Yes, yes, I love it. (laughs) Okay, we'll put all of that in the show notes. Thank you so much, Laura. It's, yeah, it's been magical. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, thank you for having me. It's been absolutely gorgeous. And I love the questions you asked and I can't wait to listen Oh, yes, you'll be listening soon. Um, (laughs) And the Wi-Fi hold up. Thank you, Wi-Fi. Thank you. Yes. I hope this episode has contributed to your understanding of your secret self. If you enjoyed it, please share it on Instagram and tag me so that more women can feel seen, heard and understood. And hit subscribe so you never miss a whisper.